I don't have any food. I'll admit it. I will brag. Those players did not just go and whip that ass for us to be like, this is not a good game. No, we whipped your ass. We took $800,000 and now we're gonna party with you. Yeah, who cares if you're in the Power 5 Conference if you don't win it, ever? If you don't beat any of the teams in it? Like, what's the point of that? Wouldn't you rather win the conference and say, like, hey, my team is good, than lose the conference and say, well, our conference is good? Well, I'll tell you what, I got two teams that's got me gassed up. It's going to be a hell of a battle. It'd be like two dogs fighting over a milk bar. Look, they don't call me tip for nothing. And my tip is, look out for the group of five this season. They've been taking it to the Power Five year after year. The only quarterbacks that ever get any love are from the Power Five. I could easily list off the top group of five quarterbacks I would rather have than those guys. I would be willing to bet that at least one of them is going to be in the running for the Heisman. Hey, Jeff. Welcome in, everybody, to the Group of Five Guys podcast. We got a kind of a special show for you tonight, just an interview out of the Mountain West. Um, you guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Make sure you follow all of our social media handles at Group of Five Guys on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Out of the Mountain West Conference, second time, actually, we've had this esteemed gentleman on, on the show with us. Um, different program this time around. We got Colorado State Offensive Coordinator Matt Mummy, Air Raid Genius. Coach, thanks for coming on again, man. Hey, I appreciate you guys having me. You're now my you're now my top guys, you know, like hey, two two there we go. you know, right. hey, that, that means you know, that means I'm special, I guess. <laughs> I saw you on you know, I saw you on Big Game Boomer's show and I was like I was like, We got we gotta get him on again because we can't have big game boomer coming up making some <laughs> list on you, you know, in the middle of the <laughs> middle of the show. <laughs> No, man. But uh, so um, how I mean, hey, camp full swing. You got football here in a couple of weeks. What? How's it looking in Fort Collins? Golly, can you believe it's already here? I feel like we just moved. I mean, I feel like we just walked off the field last year. I mean, it's it's been crazy. It's been it's been a roller coaster of a lot of things, you know, getting moved over here, getting the wife over here and and, uh, you know, getting a good class of recruits in to start this thing for this year. And obviously we had a lot of transfers, but um you know, it's really exciting. We're, you know, shoot, I think we're in day 11 or 12 of camp. Got our second scrimmage tomorrow morning. So um, it's been a lot of fun. We still got a lot of work to do, but definitely excited about lining up in a couple of weeks. What uh, is that scrimmage open to the to the public? You got fans coming out or? You know, we opened all of them in the spring, and we had great fan base and great turnouts. You know, Coach Norvell decided for, you know, for these scrimmages not to make them open. So, uh, open to media for sure, but but not open to, to the general public. Well, coming over from uh, Nevada, I mean, that's a swapping, you know, in conference, stay, staying in the Mountain West. How's that been? Has that been unusual, or, or what's kind of your feelings on that? Um you know, really emotional, um, strange, emotional. I mean, you know, whenever you're a football coach and you live in a place for four or five years, you, you definitely get attached to not only that school, but to the city and the people that live in that, you know, that great city and the people that support you and, and give you a lot of love as, as their football coach, you know? And so, it, you know, it was a difficult, you know, walk, walk away and, and, you know, for lack of better terms, walk across the street and, and, and be at, you know, in the same conference. So um, I think there was, there was a lot to that. You know, a lot of our friends that we left behind in Reno, you know, obviously we appreciated all their support and love. And, and now we're in Fort Collins and, and everybody has been just super amazing. And, you know, people coming up to us and saying, man, we, you know, we renewed our season tickets or we got season tickets now because you guys are here. And, and so, you know, it's going to be interesting what this thing's going to be in about three weeks. Yeah, there was a, obviously the success y'all had at Nevada last year. Um, it does seem like, you know, from the social media standpoint, there's that excitement. Right? There's, the, there's the new energy, kind of the new blood coming in. Um, and it seems like that community's fired up and ready, ready for ball here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I think they're ready to see the ball in the air. I mean, they're tired of the, <laughs> yeah. you know, 
seeing it run on every play and not really scoring a lot of points. And obviously we led the, you know, we led the Mountain West last year in points scored in the game at 37. So, you know, we got a lot of work to do here for sure, but um, hopefully we can, we can shoot and be in the thirties this year. I like it. It seems like, you know, and, and Murph's wife, Scarlett got a chance to tour the facilities and everything. It seems like there's like a renewed investment in football there, kind of making it a priority, you know, hadn't, hadn't had a, a good couple of years the last few years but is so so what's the expectation as coaches coming in year one you know not a lot of success in the past um but what's the expectation for you guys year one I th- you know i think definitely for us as coaches and even the players we have you know we have high expectations i think we know you know we know what we can do offensively and defensively on the field and special teams i mean we we got to go out and put these guys in position to be successful and and, and, you know, that was the thing. And, and getting here, it, it's not like the cupboard was bare. You know, there there was some good football players on this team. And, and getting them to buy into what we want, you know, we want to do in, in all, you know, aspects of the game was not really that hard because they knew what we had done in Nevada. You know, and they had seen it. Obviously, they saw it firsthand the last game of last year. And so, you know, coming in, these guys have been like, hey, let's, you know, how do we get started? You know, when can we start learning? And so the spring was fun because there was a lot of guys banging at the door, you know, to, to learn how to do the air raid and, and what it was going to look like. And so, you know, when you have that out of a new football team, which doesn't always happen, you know, you got a chance. Yeah. Well, especially with uh, you guys – had a lot of transfers from Nevada kind of follow you guys over to Colorado State. So, um, you know, how how's that help you guys as far as implementing the offense, those skill guys coming over? I mean, does that give you guys a little bit of a head up, especially with the quarterback, you know, falling? Yeah, I mean, and especially at position, you know, you got Tory Horton at receiver who was, you know, an all Mount, you know, Mountain West accolades guy. I mean, you know, already getting preseason stuff this year. Melquan Stovall. I mean, these guys have a lot of game reps. And so it was nice having those guys come over, knowing you got Clay Millen coming at quarterback, right? I mean, he's, you know, he's going to be young. He's a redshirt freshman. He's going to start his first game at Michigan. But he knows some of the supporting cast he has around him. And and the guy, you know, some of the receivers that were here have jumped right on board. And, and Clay's done a nice job of building a rapport with those guys over the summer and, and here early in camp. What is that? You know, and I don't know what the what the rules are anymore with the transfer portal and all that. What's that conversation look like when you're like, you know, you know, an entire staff essentially is going to another school? Do the players say like, hey, coach, like, you know, I want to ride with you. Or do you guys talk amongst coaches and say, hey, I think we need to take, you know, X, Y and Z. Or what's that? What's that process look like? Well, I, you know, I think, you know, I tell I get this question a lot from people and, I, and I'm. You know, they're like, man, I can't believe these guys would leave Nevada or, or any school for that matter, right, to go yeah. somewhere else. But I tell people, it's like, you know, what you have to understand is as coaches, we're the ones building this relationship with this yeah. Yeah. with young man and, and their families, right? And so when you tell them stuff and you tell them what it's going to be, the relationship is with you. You know, now, yeah. does everybody, you know, want to say that they bleed their their college colors? Yeah, but at the end of the day, I mean, they, they were brought in to Nevada to fit our identity and our offense, you know, and so that's what they were, they were brought to do. And so when they realize it's going to change when a new staff comes in somewhere, you know, obviously they decide to move on and, and be with those guys they had already built relationships with. Yeah, I mean, if I'm, if I'm Clay Millen and I see what Carson Strong did last year, I'm thinking, like, I'd like to I'd like to try to do something close to that at some point. So pray pray an easy thing. I know, you know, back when we were getting recruited, I I'll never forget coaches would always tell us or tell me anyway, like, don't worry about the relationship with the coach because they'll leave. And it was yeah. like, you know, make make the relationship <laughs> with the locker room on your visit and stuff. And now with transfer portal and all this stuff, it's so different. And I just I mean, it, obviously, it's worked out for y'all getting a bunch of guys to to come that way with you. And it's so different in so many aspects, right? I mean, these young guys, you know, it's different when I played. I didn't know anything about college football, you know, and my dad was a, was a coach. Holy cow. I mean, you know, I just 
I'm went into college and okay, here you work out, you know, you do this, you throw the ball around a little bit and you line up and play games. But nowadays with all the social media and everything out there and the, you know, the playstations and Xboxes, I mean, these guys, they know football. I mean, they know football at a very, very young age. And it wasn't like that 20 years ago, you know, or 30 years ago. So, you know, they do have an advantage and they're, you know, you got to give them credit. They're smart, you know, and, and they, they know, you know, what fits them and they understand, you know, Hey, am I going to get to play or not? And when things like that don't work out at schools, now they have a vehicle to, to leave right now. They have a way to get out and go somewhere else. Yeah. Well, with the Mountain West coach being so tough as it is, I mean, there's so many good teams and, and everyone seems to be able to score a bunch of points. I mean, and of course you're, you know, always going to be confident in your guys, but I mean, how do you think you guys match up with, you know, new, new team, new school, new players, some of them um, with the rest of the conference? You know, I think, I think, you know, obviously we're going to be really young in some areas, obviously Clay Millen being a redshirt freshman quarterback. I know on defense, we have some young guys that are going to be playing, you know, and there's some young receivers that we just recruited that are going to come in and have to <clears throat> have to contribute for sure. But, you know, I think, I think we got an opportunity to be right there. You know, I mean, I think the most important thing for us this year is just taking them one at a time and, you know, and, you know, Coach Norvell always talks about how do you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it's it's going to be a, a challenging you know, year, especially open in Michigan. But, you know, I think the opportunities are great and our guys are excited to get going. Coach, you're at Nevada October 7th. I think that's a that's a Friday night, huh? So probably going to be the only game on TV, the only only show in town. What the. Uh... What's the, I mean, have you even thought about that yet? Or what's the emotions like right there? Um, I might need to wear a helmet myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's, um, you know, my wife and I have talked a lot about it, you know, and obviously she wants to go back and, and see all of our friends, but you know, boy, sitting on a different side of that stadium is going to be, is going to be challenging, you know, but you know, it'll be exciting. I mean, it's, you know, there's still a lot of great players left in Nevada that we recruited and, you know, and I wish the best for all of them. So, you know, I'm sure we'll go over there and we'll have to fight our butts off to try and win. Yeah. I'm looking, I was just looking at that schedule. I was like, wait, cause, cause now you're in a, you know, from being at Nevada last year, now you're on the other side of the conference. So now I guess in my mind, fortunately you avoid Fresno state and San Diego state, but now you get Air Force is going to be really good this year. You get Boise um, and Utah State. So the Mountain West is just one of those. I mean, I mean, we always talk every conference has two or three at the top, but the Mountain West is like I mean, it's just deep. There's six, seven teams that could win this conference. Yeah, and you know it wasn't like that when we first got to Nevada. It was you know, I mean, of course it was Boise, right? It was yep. San Diego State, and now you you know you have so many great coaches at great schools, and it, it's a challenge every week and i think and i think you know the parody in college football is you know again these young men know a lot of stuff coming out of high school they don't necessarily sit there and say okay you know i got to go to colorado right maybe i go to colorado state and i play earlier right or you know like over you know in y'all's neck of the woods i mean maybe i play more you know at middle tennessee instead of tennessee right i get to start as a freshman or i get to start as a sophomore so i mean it's you know, I think these young men that they get that and they get these opportunities. And so the the line, you know, between power five and group of five uh, has closed down a little bit. Love yeah, to that. Yeah. I mean, that's what we talk about it every every episode, just how that gap is really not that far off. I mean, sure, you have Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia from year to year, Clemson sometimes. But everybody else I means everybody else. And we see it. Every year, we're the group of five. We on our non-conference games, we knock off power power five schools. So, how do you think the transfer portal and and all this NIL stuff is is affecting? I just like to get your opinion on it with college football in general, kind of moving forward. You know, when the transfer portal first came out, I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be crazy. And and you know what? To be honest, it it was not really realistic for young men to think that they could jump into the portal and just get a new home. Right. And so you kind of had to have an idea that somebody else wanted you to get in the portal to go. Now, 
what's happening is you're seeing a lot of schools saying, okay, well, I'll take a portal guy and not take a high school guy. So maybe a guy a little more developed. So it used to be the portal guys, you know, I think two years ago, it was only like 24, 25% were getting picked up out of the portal, you know, and still seeing high school guys taken. And now I think it's that role is kind of reversed. I think the portal's getting hit more and now it's less high school guys getting taken. So it's harder for those guys coming out of high school, you know, to get yeah. seen right and, and get their, you know, get their resume out there and get somebody to, to say, Hey, we'll, you know, we'll take you instead of a, a guy that's been in the portal and already played. What's that do? And I know, especially out there in Colorado and in that, you know, Midwest, uh, area that there's, it's so Juco heavy. What is, are the Juco guys just really getting shafted right now? Um, I mean, I, I would imagine you'd, you'd go transfer portal before going to a Juco guy, but I, I, I don't know. Is that a, is that a group that's missing out? I mean, I, I think, you know, we've, we've not recruited a lot of JC guys. We didn't recruit a lot of JC guys in Nevada. Um, you know, Jay did, a, you know, has done a really nice job in his career between Nevada and now here of, of really putting a lot of stock in taking the high school guy that fits who we are and, and tell him, Hey, you're going to, you know, you're going to play, you're going to help us in some way right out the gate and give them that experience. And it's been successful for us. I mean, Carson Strong was one of those products, Romeo Dubs, who's, you know, absolutely killing it at Green Bay right now. Sure you know, is. Been talked about a lot in the media. Cole Turner, who's at Washington, those were all guys that, hey, nobody really wanted them, and we took them, and we told them, hey, you're going to play right away, and they did, and now look at how much success they had. So, you know, it, everybody has their own way of doing it, you know, and it's, you know, it doesn't mean any ways more right than the other, right? It's just how you want to build your program. That's right. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see all these guys, these group of five guys are, I mean, all over the place in preseason are, are crushing. I mean, they're they're flying around making plays all over the place. It's nothing. Of course, we want to see them all do it. So it's it's been it's been awesome so far. But. Yeah, it's it's fun, right? It's fun to see. You know, I mean, of course, Alabama's going to have ten to fifteen guys go to the NFL, but it's a ton of fun to watch a guy go to the NFL from a, a Nevada or a Colorado State or a Middle Tennessee or an App State. You know, and, yep. and fans follow that kid. You know, yep. and it, it's pretty amazing. One of my favorite things to see is when a, you know, quote, no-name guy from a small school, you know, an undrafted guy just, like, toast somebody's first-round pick, <laughs> and all the fans are so mad because they think their first-round pick sucks. And it's like, no, dude, like, if you had watched football in the past, you would know that this guy was setting records out in the Mountain West last year. So, right, right. Great right. to see, but. Right. No, there's no, there's no doubt. So, I mean, and, and again, it, it makes football fun, right? I mean, it makes this game fun to talk about at every level. I mean, every level, even, you know, even the F uh, FCS guys, I mean, the one double A's are producing great players on, on a lot of levels. So it, it you know, I think the hi height of football right now is a lot of fun to watch at a, at a lot of different levels. Yeah. And he's talking about those other teams. We ha we've seen a lot of movement, some of these teams jumping up, um, you know, division. And the Mountain West is getting a lot of talk right now with it looks like SC and UCLA somehow going to go up north, which to me makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> but, I mean, what's kind of your opinion on the Mountain West? Where do you think that direction is going to go? you think Pac-12 may be trying to take some Mountain West teams? Or, or what's kind of your opinion on that? You know, I think, I think what we have to do is we have to do our job. You yeah. know, we have to show that we can, you know, we can add, do what we did in Nevada and have the success and build the program in the right way and, and put these guys in position to be successful and win games. You know, we need to prove that, hey, you know what? We're good enough to jump into the Big 12 or the Pac-12 and, and compete. And I'm sure that's what they want to see, you know, and I know it's all about money, but, you know, we have amazing facilities here. We have amazing boosters and, and people that really help us. And so... You know, I, I think that, you know, you're going to see a lot of change in the next couple of years. And, and, you know, if we can field a good product, you know, we'll we'll probably be a part of those talks for sure. Coach, I want to I want to shift gears a little bit because Murph is going to be able to get out there to Fort Collins, uh, Middle Tennessee game week two. 
Um, so he's going to hopefully be able to explore the town a little bit. So I know you've only been there a couple months or a few, you know, several months now, I guess. But try to pick your brain on some of the best things he needs to check out. Um, so, so far, what's the best restaurant in Fort Collins? So my wife and I's top place to go eat a good steak is Still Whiskey, which has amazing you gotta sauce. got to write these down. Yeah. Yeah, and I can text them to you guys, too. Um, Perfect. Still Whiskey is unbelievable. Okay, so Sonny Lubick, who was the coach here for a long time, is an amazing guy. He was an amazing coach. He's been back around the program. It's been a lot of fun to talk to him and spend time with him. He has a steakhouse here that's also named after him, So, which is just called Sonny's. No, again, another great place to get some seafood and a steak. So between those two, it's just which one can I get into the fastest? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, tons of little local spots, you know, that, that are just not known outside of Fort Collins. Of course, you got to visit New Belgium. You know, I mean, that's... Oh, is that there? Know, I didn't know that, that was... Yeah, and those guys are amazing. And they're, they're, I love that you know, their brewery is, is so nicely set up, very family oriented, you know, really cool. They got like a little amphitheater stage right out front and they're playing music on Sundays and Saturdays. And, you know, it's just a neat family town. There's just so much to do for so many people. And, you know, it's been, I mean, our short time here, we've, we've barely even touched what they, you know, what they have to, to, to offer. That's a, that's a must for you. To, to hit. Yeah, Absolutely. You that. Yeah. Definitely going to check that out. So that, so that, so that would be a, my next question for you was going to be, what's the best place to grab a beer? But would you, would you say one of the breweries or is there just a you know, local hole in the wall bar where the coaches can avoid anybody questioning sure. them about football? Or <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want the fame and you know, obviously new Belgium, but there's, um, so my wife and I bought a house down here in Windsor, which is about 20 minutes south of Fort Collins. Really cool little neat little downtown area. And they have a brewery called Peculiar. And uh, I think they're relatively new, but they're making some noise on, on that scene. And really cool outdoor area. And, you know, I love Windsor downtown because I can go pretty much anywhere I want. And it's a mile from the house. So we can walk down there and, and just That's you know, awesome. have to maybe go out and have a few and and it's a it's a nice setting where you don't right now you don't get harassed by anybody you know and when you're winning games hopefully you don't right but, you yeah know, but it's a really cool place for sure awesome i'll definitely have to check that out so saturday morning what's what's the i mean obviously you haven't you know been there to see what the tailgate scenes look like but do you have any info you could share on that i definitely want to do some walking around and try and meet the the CS, csu faithful yeah I mean, this fan base is hungry. I mean, they, you know, they opened this stadium. Mike Bobo opened this stadium just over five years ago, and they did an amazing job with it. And you, if you get here early enough, I'll show you around. But, okay. um, I mean, just an amazing facility. And, and the fans that will fill this facility, I mean, I think we're right around 38,000 to 40,000 fans. Unbelievable light show they do to start the fourth quarter. I mean, just – fans that just lo absolutely love their Rams. And so it's going to be, you know, for that Middle Tennessee game, it's going to be fun to, to experience that for the first time as as a Ram. Can't wait. Yeah, we're a little we're a little nervous for our uh, al alumnus uh, <laughs> going out there. Plus that altitude is I'm I mean, I, I've been out there Colorado Springs and that altitude is something. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, it is a challenge. I mean, being a Georgia guy and a Southern guy moving into altitude, it's it is definitely a challenge. Um, I got off the wall. Is that a Colorado State hat you got on? So this is a hat that I designed. You know, my uh, dad's always my dad and Mike Leach have always been big pirate guys, and so obviously, if you're in the air raid family, you're a pirate guy. I like Raise that. The uh, you know, no mercy, attack every ship you see and, you know, no quarter, right? Yeah. So I did the crossbones as the pirate flag theme, right, for our guys. Like, hey, you know, you know, attack on every play. Obviously put the Ram insignia on the top of it and then put Fort Air Raid. I love that hat. Yeah. On the back. Now the most popular hat that no one can find in Fort Collins, Colorado. So I, was, I was just going to ask you. I said, "Where?" I was going to ask you where you find one. But. So, 
Yeah, I got a, I got a little stock in my, my <laughs> office, and I've got plenty of Twitter people just wearing me out. Like, <laughs> I bet. How to, how to get these, but we might be able to make some, some things happen. Yeah, Murph. There we go. Know, shake some hands, Murph. You- oh, well, we're going to definitely – I'm going to bring some gear with me, so some group of five yeah, stuff. Sure. So. There you go. There you go. Do a little I'm swap. All trade. Yep, all about the trade for sure. Coach, that's all I got for you. I mean, Murph, you, you, you got anything? I mean, I'm just excited to get out there and, and see Fort Collins for myself. I, I honestly can't wait. It's, it's definitely on the list of, you know, travel spots this season that I'm just so excited and hopefully get a chance to, you know, see you and shake your hand and walk around a little bit. I know you're going to be a busy guy that game, but, I mean, I just – I'm fired up for it, so no, I can't I'll, wait. No, I'll definitely make it happen for you. I mean, I'll, we'll, we'll carve out some time. You just have to let me know kind of when you get here. And, for sure. Uh, you know, man, I, you know, I appreciate your guys' support. I appreciate you guys having me on for sure. I mean, obviously being a Southeast guy at heart, really, I mean, it's, it's always fun to catch up with guys back over around home. Absolutely. Yeah, now, we sure appreciate will, yeah. you coming on again. No You're question. our first two-time guest, Coach, so that's, that's an honor. Oh. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I mean, and, and so so now now Colorado State's got to be our favorite Mountain West team. We're going to be pulling. Well, for you guys are my dark horse to to win the conference. So I think I, mean, I think you guys, you guys can you make guys a wear run. Blue and white. You know, you guys wear blue and white. I mean, a little green in your you know your you know your closet won't hurt you. Oh, I got yeah, you. I don't have, I'm, a, I'm I don't an Ace fan. I'm from Oakland, so I, I got plenty of green. There you Murph, go. Murph, there find you. me a one X or a two X when you go out there. You got it. I, I, I'll wear it around for sure. Absolutely. But, and if you guys, yeah, if you guys, if you're a Colorado State student fan, you know, you're in Fort Collins, you guys support this team, get behind this team. There's nothing that'll help. I mean, we, we can we can speak for it. There's nothing that'll help turn it around quicker than support from the fans and from the community. So it'll help with recruiting. It'll help give them a home field advantage. Um, so you guys get out there. They're going to be – if nothing else, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting football. So you'll be entertained for sure. But Coach Mummy, man, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you. Good Thanks, luck. Guys. And uh, Murph will see you in a couple of weeks. Yep. All right. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach. Dude, Jeff, Coach Mummy's so tight, man. <laughs> <laughs> he he's he's the man. Like I'm I'm rooting yeah. for them so much. And you know me, I'm I'm a QB. I love to I love to air it out. So I can't wait to watch these guys go. Yeah, well, you have especially live. I'm now that I talked to him, I'm a little nervous about my Air Force prediction. But uh, <laughs> nah, I'm just. Um, but yeah, Coach Mummy, thank you again. Yeah, thank dude. you so and, much. And, and you guys in in Fort Collins, you guys go support that team. I'm telling you, there. It's, it's like we always say, Jeff. It's that culture. It's yep. that energy in the building. You can just tell talking to this guy through the computer. You can tell the level of excitement and belief he's got in that team. So Yeah, and we've seen it on social media too. I mean, they've done a good job at embracing the community and, and just the love we've seen on social media. So, you know, and I'm I'm planning on I'm coming out there week, you know, week two. So if you if any anybody's listening, watching and you're around, tell me where to go Friday night, Saturday morning meet before the out. game. I'll meet I'll meet up with you, have a cold one, talk Ram football, let's do it. Yeah, no question about it. Well, thanks again, Coach. And that's all we got for y'all tonight. Just a little shorter interview with Coach Mummy there. Group of five guys, we're out of here.